Happy Wednesday, Wenatchee Valley. Happy Wednesday, North Central Washington. The 20th day of February 2019 is upon us. This is Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. I'm Dan Kuntz, your host on another cool, chilly February day. We're doing it again, and we're continuing to do it again. That all-important weather forecast is coming up. Still a little unsettled. We had a slight chance of some light snow yesterday. Never quite developed. Didn't warm up either. We only got to 23 on Tuesday. That was it. Wasn't even close to where we should be this time of year. In fact, uh, our normal high is 43. We were 20 degrees below normal for our afternoon high yesterday. And check this out. We almost set a record low yesterday. We were that close. On Tuesday, it got as cold as 11 degrees and the record was 10 degrees, which was sent back in, uh, set back in 1986. So we were that close to setting a record low temperature every day this entire month of February. All 19 that are now in the books the temperatures have been either below normal or well below normal. So we went from a mild, dry winter to a cold, wet winter like that. Anyway, great show for you today. i uh, got a lot of news to get to. It was a busy day yesterday around the newsroom. Uh, despite the fact we've all been moving, we've been moving around. Uh, we're, we're remodeling and, and uh, moving our news offices and our production staff to different locations of the building. So we had to work with construction noises and hammering and nailing and lions and tigers and flying monkeys. Oh, my. Uh, but we still were able to crank out a newscast yesterday, and we have some news for you today. We got sports, where all the local teams are going to be playing in the regional round of the state tournament this weekend. We got all that information for you coming up with sports. Also, a nice victory last night for the Wenatchee Wild as they're getting ready to wrap up the regular season, and they eye the playoffs. We'll get to that coming up, plus the obscure holiday, plus today in history, plus birthdays, plus everyone is entitled to Mike Magnati's opinion, a brand new one, never aired before on this award-winning program into the back half of the hour. They're back, they've come back every year to promote the big uh, the big talent show, the big mobile meals variety show is Friday, March 1st. Marky Bowling and Sandy Briggs are patiently standing by. They'll be on this show live in the second half of the program. And Sandy was mentioning while we were getting all organized and arranged and getting ready for the program, she goes, my favorite part is that those cameras. I just love those cameras that you have all over the Wenatchee Valley. And so, just to appease Sandy, Let's show you what's going on around the Wenatchee Valley with our Valley View cameras. Cross camera batting lead off. Love the baseball analogy. Heck, the Mariners have their very first spring training game tomorrow. Baseball is almost upon us. Beautiful view of the Wenatchee Valley. Everybody's still covered in snow. All the roads are fine now, of course, since we haven't had any significant snow for a few days. The plows have gotten way ahead of the game. Um, so there you go. And we're still covered. Covered in snow and will be. It's going to be cold. It's going to be cold for the foreseeable future. Uh, maybe, maybe freezing on a couple locations uh, for the afternoon high over the weekend, 32 or 33. That's it. We're supposed to be in the mid-40s, so get used to the cold. It's not going anywhere for a while. Camera 2, where's Megan going to take us on our little tour? She says, let's go see. <clears throat> okay. Oh, uh, boy. It's been a while on this one. Is that the monitor camera? Is that the, I don't know what we're looking at. We're looking at the, well, we're looking at the Wenatchee River and we're looking at a bunch of orchards. There, see? <laughs> I have a tremendous grasp of the obvious. I'm pretty sure that is the, the monitor camera uh, looking towards Kashmir. And if it isn't, shame on me. Camera three. Let's take a look at, that's got to be the Arondo Rock camera turned the other direction. I think so. That looks like a highway to me. In fact, uh, since there's cars and headlights, and black asphalt. I'm going to go ahead and take a guess here and tell you that is a highway and that is quite probably US 97 and US 2 on the Douglas County side of the river. I really should have prepped this more. <laughs> Camera 4! Help me out Megan, this better be an obvious one. Oh, that's a beautiful shot of something. Uh, uh, let, me, let me describe it at home for you. What is it Megan? Manson. Oh, that's Manson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, boy, we haven't used that one in a long time. Good, good. Well, great job, Megan, anyway, for picking some pretty nice cameras this morning. Bad job, Dan. I only got one right, and that was the cross camera. Uh, I got to do better. The only one that I know for sure is the first one. The other three, I don't know until Megan throws them up on the screen, and I have to guess what we're looking at. And today, my guessing was bad. This is probably why I failed the Jeopardy audition. Good chance on that. It's five minutes after the hour on this Wednesday. From the National Weather Service, your forecast continues to look like eh, that. 
Sorry, folks. It's just unsettled, a little light snow here and there. Again, most of the snow has been relegated to either the Cascades or the Idaho Panhandle and the Spokane area. Another round of snow, possible. Today, not a lot. I mean, we have a slight chance of some light snow. We're not expecting any accumulation at all. Just a little flake here and there. Outside of that, partly sunny. 33, being a little optimistic, I think. Cloudy tonight, 20 for the overnight low. Partly sunny on Thursday. I'll take that. High of 34 degrees. Again, still well below normal. Clouds thicken up Thursday night, 18 for the overnight low. Friday, it's eh, kind of a mixed bag. We're going to have partly sunny skies, but we cannot rule out some snow. Half an inch, maybe, on Friday. Friday night, we could get another half an inch. So by the time we wake up Saturday morning, we could have maybe an inch of snow, maybe. There's a 60% chance of snow on Friday and a 60% chance of snow on Friday night, but it's not, the system is not packing a big wallop. And then we go to sunshine on Saturday with still a slight chance of some afternoon snow flurries and a high of 32. Saturday night, mostly cloudy, 21 for the overnight low, a light snowflake possible Saturday night. Sunday, we wrap up the weekend under cloudy skies and 31 degrees, and then sunshine is back on Monday and Tuesday. So some light snow off and on, spittles here and there, nothing big, nothing like we had uh, you know, last week when I was golfing in Arizona, which sounds so good right about now. It is six minutes after the hour. Let's take you up to the major mountain passes. We're not going to do the minor mountain passes. I don't know why. There's a live shot of I-90 right now. Uh, by the way, the passes are the, the winter storm warning has expired for the mountain passes, but you still got some issues up there. I-90 right now, traction tires are required uh, with some compact snow slush and ice on the roadway. It's snowing on I-90, and again, a traction tire requirement has been posted on Snoqualmie Pass. Stevens Pass has a traction tire requirement. It is snowing with compact snow and ice on the roadway. Believe it or not, things have improved. Thing, uh, just a couple of hours ago, they had chain requirements on a couple of the mountain passes. So that's gotten better. So we have a traction tire requirement on I-90, a live shot of Stevens with a traction tire requirement there. And an advisory is up and running on US-97 Blewett Pass. Let's take a look at the summit of Blewett. Again, a traction tire advisory. Clear skies up above the roadway is mostly bare and wet with some snow and some slush and some ice in places. So requirements on I-90 and Stevens. Traction tires are advised on Blewett. A couple of inches of snow possible today, half an inch tonight. And then really no snow at all until Friday. Now, Friday is going to be quite dicey. Uh, three to five inches of snow Friday and an additional two to three inches of snow possible on Friday night. That's the next significant snowfall in the major mountain passes are Friday and Friday night. And then we just have light snow showers expected from Saturday all the way into Tuesday. Traction tires required on Stevens. Traction tires required on I-90. Traction tires are advised on um, Blue at eight minutes after they are. Going to take a break when we come back. Your Wednesday morning news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley live this morning from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you'll love having midwifery care. Hey everyone, did you know that the NCW Life Channel is North Central Washington's go-to source for news? No matter how you prefer to view your news, NCW Life has you covered. Watch the evening news weeknights on TV, stream it, read it at ncwlife.com, or catch the latest news by following us on Facebook. Stay informed with local news, sports, weather, and shows featuring local people and events. NCW Life, a reflection and a spotlight of the communities we call home. Welcome back to this Wednesday edition of Wake Up Anchi Valley. I'm Dan Kuntz. We have overcast skies, 19 degrees. We're going to get up to right around 33 or 34, little spittles of snow. Same deal tomorrow. Uh, light snow possible Friday and Friday night. Also some sun breaks at times with temperatures very cool for middle to late February. Here's us making headlines on this Wednesday morning. A Washington State trooper injured yesterday when a truck driving a when a trucker driving a semi struck his patrol car. This happened at an OMAC intersection.
According to the Washington State Patrol, it happened around 1.20 yesterday afternoon. US 97 and Ang Road was the location. Troopers say the driver of the Peterbilt Semi collided with Trooper Darren Duncan as Trooper Duncan was responding to an injury accident on Ing Road. Duncan transported to Mid-Valley Hospital for treatment. The truck driver from British Columbia was not hurt. The cause is under investigation. Well, a man and a woman from the west side hiking the Colchuck Lake Trail on Monday afternoon, very lucky to run into Sean Ballard of Ballard Ambulance when the woman suffered frostbite. Shalane County Sheriff Spokesman Ken Sisson explains what happened. Yesterday afternoon, I had received a text message um, from an inReach device, which is a satellite, um, Garmin satellite communication um, device from Sean Ballard um, with Ballard Ambulance, who was just up snowshoeing, recreating with his wife um, up in the Eight Mile Lake uh, Kolchak area. And they had come across a female and a male that had camped up there Sunday night. Um, on the actual Kolchak Lake Trail. Well, she had taken off her boots at one point, and her she's gotten very cold overnight. And in the morning, she put back on her frozen boots, basically, and that uh, made her feet go numb uh, to the point where she couldn't even feel her feet. So Sean and his wife had run into uh, this couple as they were trying to come out. Um, the boyfriend had basically had to carry her uh, most of the way down the trail. And then Sean and his wife helped um, get her further down the main road back down, you know, toward the icicle. But in the meantime, he had used his device and contacted me. So uh, myself and another deputy went up uh, with snowmobiles and met them on the roadway and transported them out. Um, via, we have you know, two two place snowmobiles that we used and uh, got them out and she was checked out by a Cascade uh, ambulance um, declined treatment uh, with them but ended up I think going down to Central to get her feet looked at. Most well, like re police report a home was damaged early Sunday morning in a drive-by shooting. The home located on South Blessing Street was hit four times with a shotgun. Police say there were two people in the residence at the time of the shooting. They were uninjured after hiding in a closet door after hearing the gunshots. The home's garage door, front door, and front kitchen window were damaged in the gunfire. Police officers found several shell casings outside the home. Moses Lake detectives are following up on persons of interest in that drive-by. Say the incident may be related to a disturbance earlier that night outside a Moses Lake bar. Well, after receiving uh, reports of someone driving a Mustang with police-style lighting trying to pull over vehicles, Mattawa Police Chief Joe Harris posted a picture of the vehicle last week on Facebook, and it didn't take long for the owner of the car to come forward. 15, 20 minutes after our Facebook post went out, um, the uh, owner of the vehicle and three or four young, well, I want to say kids, I think a couple of them are his kids, I think. Anyway, they came in to asked why I was taking pictures of their car and so we had a little chat and I think uh, um, I, I think what it, I think I think it's just a young kid being a jackass to be honest with you I don't think that there was anything there where they were trying to you know like pull people over and rob them or anything like that I don't think that was the intent um, I think it was a uh, young kid teenager got a hold of uh, some of these lights because you can buy these lights anywhere and thought, hey, this would be really cool to put them in my car and drive around and, and turn them on and scare people. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of where, I think that's kind of where it came from. Sean Wooder, the superintendent of the Lake Ponderay School District in Sandpoint, Idaho, since 2012, announced yesterday as the second of three finalists for the Wenatchee School District superintendent job. Prior to his current job, Woodward was an assistant superintendent of the North Kitsap School District. The public's going to have a chance to meet him, by the way, today. Yesterday, the public and board met with the first finalist announced, the gentleman you see there, Michael Music, the interim superintendent of the Lake Oswego School District in Oregon. Today, the board will announce the third and final candidate, and they'll hold meetings for that candidate tomorrow. Meetings all follow the same schedule, public forums at the Wenatchee High School Commons, from 3.30 to 5.30, the board will then meet with the candidates each evening from 6.30 to 8.30 at the Spring Hill Suites Conference Room. The person hired will replace Brian Flonis, who announced his retirement last year. 30 years in the school district for Brian, 19, the last 19 as superintendent. Well, the inmate work release program at the Chelan County Jail is expected to resume. 
come spring. The program was discontinued last fall due to the closure of the jail annex building during construction work to make the facility more secure. Chelan County Commissioner Kevin Overbay. So we're hoping to be able to have, uh, the annex will be completed uh, with its remodel piece around June time, but we're hoping to be able to have those, uh, those folks that are gonna be able to do the uh, inmate worker program uh, available probably within the next uh, month and a half or so. Um, it'll just depend on the population pieces and the folks that we have uh, come into that, but be able to house them in the secure worker facility you know, outside of the main and uh, be able to have that program back up and running. And so we'll get a little bit more accurate information from Bill uh, this afternoon. And uh, so we just kind of continue to move forward with that piece. The Chelan County Regional Justice Center is a 383 bed correctional facility. It was originally built to hold just half that number. Meanwhile, the union that represents the jail staff complained about unsafe working conditions, pushed for more security upgrades, which included restructuring the management of the jail. Commissioner Overbay says a promotional ceremony is planned for Friday, and that's when the new jail commanders will be appointed. Well, after more than three years of study, Chelan County PUD commissioners yesterday said now is the time to hear from the community about the proposal to combine customer and utility operations at a new service center on Wenatchee's old station area. What you see there is their current location, of course. There is a concept drawing of what the $124 million service center might look like. Shared Service Director Dan Frazier shared with the board uh, analysis that confirms the combined service center is the most cost-effective and long-term uh, least cost option. Open houses in Kashmir, Chelan, Antioch, Leavenworth, and Wenatchee are set to start March 18th. That's when customers and community members will be asked to give feedback on the preferred option. PUD staff is also working with the City of Wenatchee and the Port of Chelan County to study potential future uses of their current property, the one you see there on 5th Street and Wenatchee Avenue. Each of them, each of those governmental units, have committed up to $75,000 for redevelopment planning focused on creating viable options for the future use of that property and that's what's making headlines at 17 minutes after they are still overcast still 19 degrees going to get up into the lower 30s today which is going to feel downright balmy uh the news with grant olson comes your way at five o'clock six o'clock and ten o'clock you want to find out what happened on this wednesday well we put it all together for you uh wednesday uh, thursday friday not so much on saturday and sunday we all need a break now and again uh, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock available on television, also available online at ncwlife.com. We also post a link to that on our Facebook page. And at the bottom of your screen are all the different ways you can get a hold of us. And boy, do you like to get a hold of us. We appreciate it. Best way, news at ncwlife.com. The email, news at ncwlife.com, because a bunch of people get that one. You can also go to our website at ncwlife.com, click on the Contact Us icon. And uh, you can fill out a form there. We get it that way. You can pick up the telephone and give us a call. You can go to our Twitter handle. You can go to our Facebook page and private message us. Uh, technology, it's a beautiful, wonderful thing. But it can be unhelpful at times. So get a hold of us. Let us know what's on your mind. Or maybe there's a news story you think deserves our attention. It's 18 minutes after the hour. When we come back, who's playing who and when in boys and girls state basketball playoffs? Sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley. Live this morning from Studio 37 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian. This is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. You'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week and let's get inspired. Welcome back to Wake Up in Anchee Valley on this Wednesday, just about 20 minutes after the hour. Let's do sports, and we finally know the matchups, the game times, and the locations of the regional basketball tournaments this weekend. 
And we start out with the Wenatchee boys. They're a number 12 seed. They'll take on 13 seeded Mount Rainier Saturday. This will be at Ellensburg High School, 4 o'clock in the afternoon Saturday. The winner advances to take on the loser of the Richland Mount Psy in the first round of the State 4A tournament in the Tacoma Dome. That'll be next Wednesday at 12:15. Go Panthers. To the 1A boys tournament. Number six seed Cashmere will take on the number three seed. That's the Zilla Leopards. That'll be Saturday, six o'clock. Davis High School in Yakima. Both teams will advance to state. The winner gets a first round bye. The loser will have to play the winner of the Cascade Christian and Royal game Wednesday in the Sun Dome at 345. That's the boys. To the girls side, both Cashmere and Antioch will play at Wenatchee High School Friday night. First game at six features the number four seed Bulldogs against the number five seeded Elma Eagles. Winner gets a first round bye at state. Loser will face the winner of the Kingsway Christian and Medical Lake game at the Sun Dome come Wednesday. The 8 o'clock game on Friday night at Wenatchee High School features the number 11 seed Antioch girls against number 14 seeded Enchilium. The winner advances to the State B in Spokane. They'll take on the loser of Friday's game between Sunnyside Christian and Elmira Cooley Hartline Crosby Stills Nash and Young. That would be at the Veterans Memorial Coliseum Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. The Brewster boys and girls will play at Eastmont High School. In their regional, this will be Saturday. The Bear Boys will play first, 6 o'clock, against Toodle Lake. It'll be a seeding game for the State 2B tournament. Winner gets a first round bye. Loser will face the winner of Kalama in Friday Harbor. The Brewster girls will follow at 8 o'clock. They'll take on Mabton. That's a loser out game. The winner will have a first round date against the loser of Rainier and Wakayakum in Spokane. Well, the winter season is all but done. The Columbia Basin Big Nine, by the way, out with their all league. Selections. First team honors go to Wenatchee's Garrett Long and Eastmont's Isaac Wellborn. Second teamers for the Panthers, Nate Blauman, Darius Carlson, Eastmont teammates Oscar Cavillo and Trey Haberlock. Honorable mentions. Big Nine also names an all-defensive squad. The all-defense team includes Wenatchee's Chase Lloydhammer and Nate Blauman, along with Eastmont's Tanner Nelson. Defense honorable mentions go out to Wenatchee's J.J. Jelsin and Eastmont's Oscar Calvillo and Isaac Wellborn to the, to the uh, Big Nine Girls selections. When she's Cammie Worley, first team selection. Congratulations to her. Eastmont's Caitlin Cox was the second teamer. Jaden Brown, honorable mention. And the Wenatchee Wild on the road to wrap up the regular season of BCHL play with a stop last night in Salmon Arm. Wenatchee received stellar defensive performances in net. Cal Sanquist stopped 29 of 30 shots. That's good. The Wild offense clicked into gear with a 4-1 victory. Arch Ecker had the call on the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. Video courtesy of Hockey TV. Gashevsky back up high. Cook midpoint open face and then moves it across for Gashevsky. Shoveled down low and Arnold plays it on the end boards. A little help there from Hodges. A.J. Hodges steps out, throws it through in the back door, shot and a score. Trevor Grabel coming down the left side. Got a quick snappy one-timer off a good low shot right along the ice surface after the crossing feed from the right circle. And Grabel punches it home. Wild cash in, and they lead it one to nothing. Hodges got there. Now it's turned over. Reifenberger shot and a save made. He gets dumped. Rebound shot and score. Brandon Cook on the rebound after the Wild drilled into the zone. And there was a huge hit thrown on Reifenberger. Silverbacks work it to Little, but it's coughed up. Arnold's got it. Tried to get a shot. Can't. Gashevsky back door shot on a score. Christoph Filion. As Brendan Kirshner was there, but the wild control. Arnold drops it off for a cycling. Gashevsky. He's in front, shot and a score. Josh Arnold dropped it off for Matt Gashevsky, and he danced around in the right circle, cut across into the slot, and slammed it home. Off the heel of his blade, he gets it back on the near side. Stick handle sharply across to Hirose. Shot and a save made. Rebound shot on a save again, and eventually tapped in. Well, a sprawling Sanquist made a couple of stops, but he couldn't cover up the last one, and Sampson was there, able to tap home the loose puck. Up top for Modry, then over to Winslow. Winslow back up high. Modry shot, blocked on the way through. Unruh whacks at it, and it's going to get cleared the length of the ice, but as it does, that brings us to the final horn, and this one is in the books. The Wild wrap up the regular season against their rivals, Penticton. That's tonight. Uh, still locked in the first place battle with Merritt, by the way. The Bees are both at 75 points. The puck drops tonight at 7 o'clock. And then they get a couple weeks break, and it's off to the playoffs. Go Wild. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Wednesday morning. It is the 20th day of February, and the obscure holiday of the day today is National Love Your Pet Day. Isn't that cute? 
National Love Your Pet Day. Uh, purpose of this holiday, of course, is to love your pet, spend time with your pet, give them love and affection. Doesn't matter what kind of pet it is, cat, dog, bird, fish, reptile. I know a couple of people who have reptiles. They scare me, quite frankly. Uh, I have some fun facts about pets. Of course I would do. The number of households that own a pet in this country, this country, not another place, uh, 60 million households have a dog, at least one dog. 47 million households have at least one cat. 12 million households have fish. 8 million households have birds. 4.7 million households have a reptile. Uh, 2.6 million uh, residences, households have uh, horses. And uh, 2.5 have saltwater fish. The benefits of owning pets are many fold. All of this stuff has been studied by scientists and sociologists. You gotta believe the experts, right? Um, first of all, it lessens your chance of developing allergies by having a pet. It strengths, they believe it strengthens the immunity systems of kids by having pets around. Uh, instant icebreakers. I mean, you're out walking the dog on the trail. It's a great way to get to know people. Uh, it's good for your heart health. It increases your fitness level, of course, because you're out there taking the dog for the walk. The dog's not the only thing that needs a little exercise now and again. And it may improve depression. Of course, they have dogs now um, that actually are trained to do that. To, you know, they figure out when you're not feeling too good and they take them to hospitals and places like that and they snuggle up to you and they make you feel better. National Love Your Pet Day today. Declared by me. There. Out of my fountain on the internet. Uh, let's do uh, Today in History. Happy birthday to the post office. Post office is 227 years old today, February 20th, 1792. The Postal Service Act, which established what was then known as the United States Post Office Department, that's what it was called then, was signed into law by U.S. President George Washington. Happy birthday to the post office. Ironically enough, I don't mail anything anymore, and I hardly ever get mail. Oh, well, but they're going strong at 227 years old, or at least they're going anyway. Uh, the Met is 147 years old. This is the greatest museum, in my opinion, on the planet. I've been in New York City, and, and, and people say, well, you've been there and I haven't. What would you recommend? And the first thing I tell them, you have to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. You know, it's only 25 bucks and it's so well worth it. It's the largest art museum in the United States. About seven and a half million people go there every year. It's the second most visited uh, museum of any kind in the world. And for since, since the, from the time it opened until just a couple of years ago, admission was absolutely free. Didn't cost you a dime. It's still free for residents of New York City. New York City runs and operates the Met. Out-of-towners, you got to pay 25 bucks now which is kind of a bummer. But if you ever get a chance to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, first of all, you can't do it in a day. It's going to take you a few days anyway. It's well worth it. Happy 147th birthday to the Met, as they call it, in New York City. We don't have the emergency broadcast system anymore. We now have, in the world of broadcasting, we have the emergency alert system. It replaced the emergency broadcast system because things like this happened. February 20th, 1971, 41 year, 48 years ago today, the emergency broadcast system was accidentally activated nationwide in an erroneous national alert. The guy who was operating the teletype typed in the code word, which was hatefulness, which activated the system. It was a mistake. It was a, it was a, it was a pre-scheduled test. All the radio stations and television stations knew that this test was coming, but it was only supposed to be the test. And for about 45 minutes there, people thought we were in serious trouble. That's the actual message. Uh, obviously, it, it revealed a lot of major flaws in the EBS. Uh, a, lot of store, a lot of stations, television stations and, and radio stations, didn't even get the alert, and the vast majority that did get the alert ignored it, or they didn't know what to do. Yeah, the whole nation went on alert for about 30 minutes 48 years ago today, the not-so-lamented emergency broadcast system. And 11 years ago today, the Rolling Stones album, Black and Blue, was sold at auction for $5,589.24. The guy who owned the album bought it at a garage sale or a yard sale or something like that for $2.79. Turns out that this particular copy of the album Black and Blue was autographed by the Rolling Stones. It was also autographed by John Lennon, Yoko Ono, Paul McCartney, Linda McCartney, and George Harrison. How's that for a collector's item? The guy found it at the yard sale, bought it for three bucks, sold it for five and a half thousand dollars. You know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. 30 minutes after the hour, 
is to do some birthdays for you. Happy 92nd birthday to Sidney Portier, completely retired now from acting. Uh, he was born in the Bahamas, eventually moved, of course, to the United States. Caddy Moore for Best Actor in his role for Lilies in the Field. He was in To Serve with Love in the Heat of the Night. Guess who's coming to dinner? The legendary Sidney Portier, 92 years old today. The last surviving Kennedy of the original nine, Gene Kennedy Smith, is 91 years old today. He was the eighth of the nine children born to Joseph P. Kennedy and Rose Fitzgerald, the longest living of the Kennedy siblings, the last surviving Kennedy sibling. What it must be like to, you know, your brother was the president and your brother was a senator and your other brother was a senator and your other sister was the founder of the Special Olympics. Gene Kennedy Smith is 91 years old today. Walter Becker from Steely Dan. We miss this guy. Passed away, of course, a couple of years ago at the age of 67. Singer, songwriter, guitarist, producer. Co-founded Steely Dan with Donald Fagan. Inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Class of uh, 2001, Walter Becker. Would have been 69 years old today. Sydney Crawford is 53 years old today. Not just another pretty face. She was the valedictorian of her high school class, the Kalb High School in Chicago. She was the smartest kid in the class. She was the valedictorian. She uh, got, an, uh, she got a, a scholarship to go to Northwestern to study chemical engineering, and she dropped out of Northwestern and became a model. N not a bad gig. Sidney Crawford is 53 years old today. And life is good for Justin Verlander, one of the best right-handed pitchers of the last 10 years, without question. He's one of only two players to win the Rookie of the Year Award, the Cy Young Award, and the MVP Award. Ironically enough, the only other man to do that was Don Newcomb, who passed away yesterday at the age of 92. Uh, Justin Verlander is a tremendously great pitcher, uh, won a bunch of Cy Youngs. He's thrown a couple of no-hitters. He makes $28 million a year, and he's married to Kate Upton. Life is good for Justin Verlander, who's 36 years old today. 32 minutes after the hour, a brand new Everyone is Entitled to Mike McGnatty's Opinion. Mike's going to take a little walk down memory lane. He does that a lot. And then we're going to be talking about the big Mobile Meals Variety Show, which is coming up on Friday, March 1st. Marky Bowling and Sandy Briggs standing by watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Put winter weather in its place with a new Cub Cadet snow thrower from Rose Tractor. Hi, this is Corey. Let us help you get through the season with our line of Cub Cadet snow throwers. When it comes to snow, never let winter weather get in your way. The Cub Cadet X Series line of snow throwers offers three levels of snow clearing power and a host of award winning models. Get ahead of the snow. Let us help you get into the right snow thrower for the job. Rose Tractor, family owned and operated, located at the corner of 3rd and Rock Island Road in East Wenatchee. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. Antique Mall at Cashmere wishes you a happy and prosperous new year. With 15,000 square feet to explore, Antique Mall at Cashmere has something for everyone. For repurposing projects, do-it-yourselfers, and those with a keen eye for making something old, fresh, and new again, this is the place to find your next project. Antique Mall at Cashmere, their friendly staff is here to help you. Stop on by today. Walkabout Grill, open seven days a week for lunch and dinner in downtown Wenatchee and now downtown Leavenworth, where eating out is eating healthy. Since 1932, Camp Seneca, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Seneca's Rustic Log Cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Seneca today, www.campfirencw.org. 
If you're stuck trying to find the perfect beer for you, look no further than Badger Mountain Brewing. We specialize in creating tantalizing craft beers that will soothe any picky taste buds and will satisfy your cravings. Check out everything from our amazing honey blonde that will appease even the most finicky taster or a delicious frothy stout for dark beer lovers. Experience them all at Badger Mountain Brewing. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnotti, and everybody's entitled to my opinion. Now, in high school, my friend Fritz and his girlfriend Maria, they started asking me to go out on their dates with them. Now, this was because Maria had a friend, Sally, who liked me, and Maria always arranged for this kind of double date kind of thing. Now, I really wasn't into Sally, but to be nice, I'd have to go to her door and pick her up, you know, and then go out with Fritz and Maria. But about the third time this happened, Sally's parents met me at the door and they said I couldn't pick up Sally anymore until I combed my hair and tucked in my shirt. I turned around and walked out. Oh, Sally came running out a few minutes early, really angry, and said she told her parents to mind their own doggone business. But honestly, this was the last time I picked up Sally. You know, memories of youth and dating, they're sometimes not all they're cracked up to be. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Club Crow is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow Saturday nights. We have live bands to rock the night away. Club Crow is bringing comedy to Cashmere. Check out our Facebook page for upcoming dates. Live jam session, first Sunday of every month. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. Hi, I'm Kevin Prosser, and this is my print shop, Color Effects in Cashmere. Color Effects offers screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing on t shirts, jerseys, bags, banners, signs, and more. With 30 years' experience, you won't be disappointed with the quality and quick turnaround times you will get at more than a fair price. Please call Color Effects. There's no substitute for the power of cable TV advertising. With Soleon Cable TV Advertising, you can reach your target audience right here in North Central Washington. We understand their viewing habits and can precisely target your customers on great cable networks like these. Call Soleon Broadcasting today and let us show you how to put your business message right in front of thousands of prospects at a very affordable price. Soleon Broadcasting, 509-888-2020. It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Welcome back to Wake Up in Anchee Valley on this Wednesday. It's the 20th day of February 2019. I'm Dan Coons. These two lovely ladies sitting immediately to my left are back again for another year. They came last year. Can't remember if you came two years ago or not. No. Okay. That, that's a my bad, Mark. I don't know happen again. <laughs> to my immediate left, uh, Sandy Briggs, my Anchee High School class of 1974. Yay. <laughs> and Marky Bowling to my far left. They're here to talk about not only Mobile Meals, but the big Mobile Meals Variety Show, which is the big fundraiser of the year, except the America Performing Arts Center on Friday, March 1st. Welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank thanks you for much. answering my email. You're uh, welcome. Wait a minute, you emailed me. I emailed you. Yes, you did, Marky. So thanks for not deleting my contact information <laughs> from your computer. <laughs> I appreciate it. We're going to get into all the acts that are going to be uh, taking the stage for this big variety show, but to the uninitiated, because it's been a year, uh, Sandy, give us uh, Mobile Meals 101, a little background on yourself and on the, on the operation and all that good stuff. Sure. Well, our motto is a meal and a friend at the door each day, and that started in 1971. 
with some doctors' wives who noticed their husbands were their not their their um, patient husbands' patients were not doing well when they went home from the hospital because of food needs. So they just asked the cook at the hospital kitchen, "Could we buy some meals from you and deliver them?" So they did, and then it got bigger and bigger. So they recruited some friends, and pretty soon, within a year, they had delivered a couple thousand meals. So then they um, became a nonprofit, a local nonprofit. So we are, I think, a gem of what Wenatchee represents because we're a local 501c3. We have no government funding, we never have, and we're just supported by the community. The recipients do contribute something towards the cost of the meal, but um, it's one of those things that I think makes Wenatchee what it is. Um, local people meeting a local need. And there's always a need for volunteers, and we'll touch on that a little bit. But how many how many meals on a, on a given day do you deliver? Um, today will be 95. Yeah, and we do that in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee, so there is a geographic limit because mm -hmm. the meals are hot and right. be delivered. And uh, some days of the week it's more or less, but that's about that. So uh, last year we did close to 19 over 19,000 meals. Um, Monday through Friday. I'm no expert. That's a lot it of meals. Is, yes, and we have a great partnership, I will say, with uh, Central Washington Hospital. That's where our office is, and they cook and pack, prepare the meals and help package them. And so we're able, because of that, to meet some special diet needs. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting like just a house diet. You could have some personal preferences as well as diabetic, those kind of things, a little salt. Gluten-free, that kind well, of stuff. Well, not quite there okay. yet on that. That's a really, sure it's some of that depends on the facilities that the kitchen have before right. you can actually claim that. But we certainly can accommodate a lot of needs. And so they, um, they have a great staff there that do that, a busy place there, and they have really committed to mobile meals as a um, entity the hospital well, good, has. Good for them. They don't yeah. have to do that. No, they don't, and they, yeah. they're great um, to work with, and their kitchen staff works really hard for our patients. So uh, logistically, how does this work? How does the driver who's got the hot food in the back of his car know where to go, and is there carefully planned routes oh, so everybody yeah. gets a, a We work? have three routes in East Wenatchee, and four in and, and four in Wenatchee. So they normally a driver drives like every third Wednesday, so you have a set day that's your turn. And they show up at the hospital at ten forty five and they get a list of instructions that says turn left here, turn right here, park here, go to the front door, go to the back door. So I always jokingly say, if you can read and drive, you could be a mobile meals volunteer. <laughs> you shouldn't be reading and driving at the same time. But um, so they get a cooler with the meals and they make their deliveries and then they come back to the hospital with the empty cooler. And one of the other little, um, it's a kind of an offshoot service we provide. It's just an extra pair of eyes and ears mm -hmm. in case someone might be needing a call from their kids or we might, you know, we don't provide any of that care, but we could certainly call the daughter and say, you know, your mom seemed to have be disoriented today. It's like another welfare check. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So when the drivers come back, they might give me that kind of information, and I have an emergency contact that I would follow up with on that. It must be a terribly rewarding work for the drivers. They must really enjoy it. It is, it is. And occasionally, you know, we sometimes shuffle people around on routes to keep them even, and so they'll come back and they say, I didn't have Mary, you know, <laughs> and, and I can't give a lot of information out about Mary, but I can just say, right. Mary's fine, she's just on a different route. Well, I want to change routes then because <laughs> I want to see Mary. <laughs> So it is rewarding in that Do they get way. a chance to visit at all with the clients, or is it just, here's your meal and i got to make it to Well, the briefly, thing? because they do have about 10 or 12 stops to make. But there's right. enough time to um, make a brief hello and a chit-chat. And sometimes they do something like, especially in this weather, they might say, could you get my mail? So right. they might run out and bring the mail in. You know, not a lot of time, but certainly want to give that little personal attention. So how many drivers do you have, and they're all volunteers, by the way, throw that out right now. How many drivers do you have right now in your program? Um, about 170. Some of them are couples, so you're, right. you're a friend. I do have a group. There's a group of women who finally maneuvered around, so they all drive on the same Friday, and then they go out to lunch afterwards. Ah. So that, that's kind of neat. So uh, it, most people do it with a friend or a partner or something. So there's seven routes a day, so that would be a, you know probably 7 to 14 people a day. Uh, how many do you need? We probably have about 10 vacant spots. Wow. So, you know, but when you look at the number of days, so 20 days a month, seven people, that's a lot of spots. So we have a, uh, they're always met. We, we have not missed a delivery day, even when this, you know, school might be delayed, mm -hmm. mobile meals is not delayed. Um, so I have an email list of the drivers, and I'll send out a couple times a month. These are the vacant routes, and they are always filled. But we do have a need for more volunteers. So when your your, your mom did this, right? She did. So that's, which got you involved. Right. How did, 
How did she coordinate it in the days before spreadsheets and computers? Well, she had a, an orange uh, manual typewriter. Wow. And I would see her sitting at the kitchen table typing up the schedule, and then they got mailed out. Um, so I ended up took that typewriter to college, so I think by then she had a, maybe a computer. Yeah. But um, so that's how that happened. Uh, and back then, I think there was four routes. And now there's it's seven a day. Seven, seven. Yeah. It probably helps from a logistical standpoint. The valley itself is pretty compact. Right. So that yeah. it, it, it doesn't take a lot of time to get from point A to point B to point C. Right, it's and we try to cluster the routes together so that people are not going hither and yon. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of fun, you know, with Google Maps now, it's pretty, you hear an address and go, oh, I bet that'll be Route 3 because you just okay. kind of know where things are. How do clients uh, end up on your list? How, do you, how does a, somebody become a part of the mobile, not from a volunteer standpoint, but somebody who's receiving it? The food, when they're discharged right. from the hospital? We have a lot of referrals from the social workers okay. at the hospital. We have a great website, um, and so people might be looking for that. Uh, you know, kids will come and visit their parents, and mom says, oh, I'm fine, and you open the refrigerator, and there's only Jell-O. Mm -hmm. So then they'll Google home-delivered meals, and we pop up, and so then they call. And then we um, also have um, sometimes a neighbor will call and say, I'm concerned about my neighbor. And then, believe it or not, we have some recipients who used to be volunteers. Oh, wow. And remember that they did this and now they have a need, and so then they call. So if you're, you say, you know what, I got a solid, dependable car and I got some time on my hands, I suppose that's the first two things <laughs> you need right there. Right. And, if, and you have to be 18. You have to be 18, a uh, pretty good driving record. Right. What, what, how does that whole, tell, walk me through the process of going from volunteer to you're out on Route 7? We have a, our, actually in our volunteer applications are on our website, so you can pull that up. We do a background check, it's required by law. And so they fill that application out. We, um, we have a board member who does the background checks and then we get the phone call to them and then they ride along with someone okay. to see the ins and outs of what you do. And, and you know, what if you ring the doorbell and nobody answers and it says on there what you can do. And so then they go on a, call it a training route. Okay. And then they come back and we show them the schedule and see where the openings are and then they get plugged in. So it, it, turnaround time could be, just be a short time. And, and, and it's down the road you go. Right. So, and my guess is you, you, have, you, you retain your volunteers to stick around oh, for the present yes. time. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, well, how long have you been doing this? Well, when I came back after college with my husband to Wenatchee in 1987, and my mom said, would you like to be a mobile <laughs> meals volunteer? <laughs> so I did, and yeah, I well, packed mom. my kids around with me when they were little, and mm -hmm. they carried the soup up to the door, you know, and everything. And then... Um, so that was it for a while. And then when we, my kids went off to college, I started helping part-time in the office, covering mm -hmm. vacations. And then about nine years ago, um, I was given the opportunity to be the coordinator. So, and, and as you mentioned before, the, the recipients of these meals uh, help off, uh, offset the cost, mm -hmm. which is, my guess this is, is too terribly expensive. No, we purchase the meals from the hospital and they, um, only charges the cost of the food and the packaging and a small overhead. They they absorb the cost of the labor for That's their staff. Incredible. It is a huge donation from the hospital. So we ask the recipients to pay as much as they can towards the four dollars and fifty cents cost of the meal. Mm -hmm. And some pay that and some pay less. And since we don't have any uh, federal restrictions, it's a kind of a uh, honor system. They they just pay what they can and we just work with that. And it's that's a good advantage to have, not federal restrictions. Yeah. Just you know, let us just we know what we're doing. We don't need we don't need Big Brother. So telling yeah, us what to so do we have the United Way funding. We've been a United Way agency okay. since 1974. We get some grant funding through the Community Foundation. We have donors, um, and we have fundraisers like this, and we have um, and then we uh, do some independent grants too. Uh, and Marky is going to talk about the big fundraiser, which is what we're talking about when we come back from commercial. That's the big variety show. But before we do that, how did you get roped into this whole mobile meals thing? Actually, there was a board member, Judy Jensen, and she called me up one day and said, do you want to be on the board? And I had a friend who was a driver who kept at me mm -hmm. until I finished helping out with another organization. And she said, well, come, come and ride with me and started riding with her. And then I ended up with my own route. And then I ended up on the board, and, <laughs> and it kind of snowballed. It's a great organization. I love working for Mobile Meals. And how long have you been uh, with Mobile Meals? I don't know. Five, six. Oh, wow. Maybe. Seven. At least, yeah. yeah. So from a driver's standpoint, from somebody who's out there delivering, what's, it, what's that like? I love driving. I love my route. I have Route 7 in East Wenatchee. I know the names of the people, and I visit in. A lot of mine on my route, you go ahead and take it in after mm -hmm. you knock. And... 
I'm visiting all the way to the counter and all the way out the door, and sometimes you're backing out the door <laughs> still talking. But it's, it's wonderful. It's fun. What's and good, it only takes an hour and a half oh, that's, at that's the a, most. That's a piece of cake. Yeah. And it's, uh, my guess is it's probably expanded your, your social calendar quite a bit. You Absolutely. got to meet all kinds of cool people. Yep. Love so, it. That's yeah, cool. What's it going to take, Sandy, to get this out of the Wenatchee, East Wenatchee area? Because certainly there's people in Cashmere and Waterville. Well, there, there is a program out of aging okay. and adult care okay. that we refer back and forth, and they cover those areas. Some of those meals might, some of the really outlying areas might need to get frozen meals because you can't get a hot meal there hot in the safe manner. So if they're outside of our area, then... Um, they, we would refer them to there, and they would their needs could be met that way. Uh, one last question before we take a break and talk about the Big Mobile Meals Variety Show. Um, what, I'm, I'm spitballing here, and if you don't know the answer, you certainly don't have to answer. How many people do you think who are receiving these meals, this, that's the only hot meal of the day they're going to get? That's it? Yeah, I would probably say probably 50, 75 percent of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, are pretty isolated. Right. Um, you know, don't get out. You know, their world can get pretty small. Right, yeah. and so that's what one of the things I love about our motto is because we are a friend. And you know, if they're sometimes you know their meal might be running a bit late because of whatever reason the snow or whatever, and I might get a call. You know, Sandy, my meal is usually here by eleven <laughs> ten. <laughs> you know, it's like waiting for the mailman. You know, and where is it? And because they really count on that contact. Mm -hmm. Well, as Sandy mentioned, they get money from the United Way. They get money from the Community Foundation North Central Washington. Uh, they got people who just cut them a check and say, here you go, do whatever you want to with it. But the big fundraiser, the single biggest fundraiser, is the Mobile Meals Variety Show. And it's the number one fundraiser of the year. It's coming up on Friday, March 1st. And we're going to talk about that with Marky. Thank you for not uh, nodding off. I'll send you a chat. <laughs> no problem. By the way, Marky is going to handle that portion of our conversation when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. I'm working today. I've got some work to do today. Don't forget, I've got some work for you today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Thanks. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in our community. New beginnings feel great, don't they? Yes, they do. Be a job creator. Goodwill. There's more behind the store. Hey everyone, Fletcher and Amy Ellington here from Live It Up. In the investment world, ROI stands for Return on Investment. Well, how does better health, better wealth, and better relationships sound for ROI? Join us every week right here on NCW Life and learn how to invest in the most important asset, you. We're going to answer your questions and provide some weekly inspiration so you can create a life that you love. Join us on Live It Up. What's your auto mocha emergency? It's a Frappita mocha with whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frappita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the mocha Frappitas. A peach Red Bull. Six minutes left to go in the program. The most entertaining part of the program isn't this part. It's what's going on while the commercials are playing and we're having a, a little chit-chat. Marky Bowling is going to take over the second part of this thing because she is the, you're the coordinator of this of this big fundraiser, the big yes. variety show. Friday, March 1st, New America Performing Arts Center. What number of show is this on the... 11. You know, how many... Oh, sorry, That's is it right 11th. there? 11th. The 11th. Yep. So take me back 12 years. Whose idea was, we need to raise money. What do we do? I wasn't with them then, but okay. when it first started, it was being held at a church. At the United Methodist United Church. United Methodist Church. As a matter of fact, they're the ones that are doing our first performance this year, the choir. Okay. Um, 
and it was choirs and the mariachi band, and I started going to them then. And then um, I think we kind of kept along with that, and they've had different people producing them. And then they needed somebody, and I said, Ooh, can I do that? I'll do that. Uh -huh. and it kind of changed it over from choirs into a variety show. Yeah, and it's, and it's a little bit of everything. It's a, it it's a smorgasbord of local talent. Tell, uh, walk me through the recruiting process, Marky. How does that work? Hey, this is Marky. Are you in? What? Well, yeah. Usually, like, I'll go to Apple Blossom, and I'll go out to the Fiddlers, and right. I'll go to different things happening in town, and then just leave them my card and say, I really would love to have you on my show. And no one's ever turned us down that yet. Bad. Yeah. You've actually had to have people wait a year wait, sometimes. Yes. Yeah. I had a young man who's going to be in it this year who approached me at the rehearsal last year and said, oh. can I be in your show? And I said, oh, I'm sorry, not this year, but I'll use you next year. And, and we, he is. So Mario. are there are there the acts that are just so popular with the audience that they just have a standing invitation to come back every year if they want to? Fabulous Feed. Well, there you go. Is one. Thanks, and Melissa. We yeah. Yeah. She's wonderful. And we had um, the Apollo Club for ten years, and um, so we thought it is a variety show, so we need to change it up a little bit, and so that's why we have the church choir this year. And Melissa just is fabulous. Yeah. yeah she she always arranges it. Everything's great. And we're having the silks this year, and there's the two girls doing the silks, and then the young lady that is uh, the ballerina will be dancing with them, too. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, we have the complete lineup uh, in, in the order that they will be performing. My guess is staging and pacing probably plays a significant role as far as set changes and microphones and all that stuff. The pros, uh, Michael and the crew at the Mike. American Performing Arts Center are just fantastic to work with. I know I've worked with them. How, does that, how do you decide what act goes when on this thing? Um, actually, I set it up where we try to think of what is going on on stage. So, like, the choir's going first and there's risers and everything. So you kind of need somebody single to go mm -hmm. after that. So you can close the, the curtains, curtain right. And get yep. the risers out. <laughs> and then when I think I have it, I send it in to Mike at the mm -hmm. pack. And he says, well, we need to tweak this a little bit. And so we do that. And then there's a rehearsal the night before. And that's when we do all the staging and the music and everything like Maybe that. Maybe I should start rehearsing this show. <laughs> Maybe <it'd be> <laughs> no. As Marky mentioned, uh, the uh, the choir from the church, uh, which hosted this, uh, they bat lead off, using the baseball analogy. Mario, I'm sorry, the last name? Murillo. Murillo uh, is going to be playing what? He he's is going act. to sing um, Hallelujah with a guitar, and oh. then he's going to do a piano number, okay. and he's totally self-taught. Good to see, and he's, he's a kid? Senior in high school. Senior in high school, wow. Senior in high school, and him. I think he's with the chamber choir also. Okay. So, very talented young man. Uh, Fabulous Feet will be taking the stage after that. They're going to do uh, all kinds of different cool things. I don't know what Melissa has planned, but I'm sure it's awesome. Well, the, the first one's called Bat Dance, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And then there's another one that is a tap dance, mm -hmm. and then the silks with right. the ballerina. So, Did you, I don't know if you watched the uh, the um, royalty selection pageant a couple weeks yes. ago, but of course you saw what, yeah. what they were doing yeah. on stage yes, then. Yes, I did. I was like, there are people hanging from the late yeah. ceiling. It, was like, it is. It's incredible. fun. Uh, a lot of creativity there. Uh, stage kids went at you back. They're they're, they're uh, regular contributors to this, aren't they? No, this is their first. Year. This is the second first year. First year. Yeah. First okay. year that we've had them. Um, and I got confused because I go to all of their programs. These mm -hmm. kids are fabulous. The yeah. teachers are fabulous. And I went and saw Beauty and the Beast, mm -hmm. and they're doing two numbers from Beauty oh, and the good. Beast for our show. Good. Uh, we're running out of time. I only got like a minute left. Okay. Uh, we we did a profile on the next act, who's uh, Blythe, uh, who's yes. actually related to one of our top content producers, Uriah. She's the one who got that scholarship to the to the ballet. Yes. And she needs to. She's raising money for that too. She wants to 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 make it big in ballet. And then this act I've never heard before: Intermission. Is that a is that like yeah. a folk group? What is that? Is it? It's for all of us old people that have to stand up and stretch and yawn and uh, sit back down. Real quickly, I'm am sorry we ran out of time. Uh, Beth Whitney uh, and then um, more dancing and then more dancing. Uh, there's a lot of dancing. I'm there right. is a lot of dancing. And yes. closing out the deal is Music Theater One H E. They're going to be performing a uh, set from Newsies, which is this year's Apple Blossom musical. Uh, Friday, February 1st, tickets how much? March 1st. Mar I'm sorry, $12. March 1st. $12. $12. You're going to get $12 worth of entertainment. Absolutely. Now, no doubt. And it all goes to Mobile Meals. All right. Thanks for joining me. I wish we ran out of time. 
have to have you back one of these okay. days, all right? All right. Sounds great. Everybody have a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.